I'm George, co-founder of SoloSuit, and today I'm going to show you folks in Washington how to respond to a debt collection lawsuit. All right, the first thing you need to know is that you only have 20 days to respond to the lawsuit, otherwise you automatically lose your case. That means you really want to respond in that 21 day window. That is laid out in the Washington Civil Rules. Title 4, subsections A to E. If you want to go look up that law, now you can do it. All right, so I'm going to go over the four steps to respond to a debt collection lawsuit. All right, the first one is to create the answer document. Second is answer each issue of the complaint. Third is you assert your affirmative defenses. And fourth is to file the answer with the court and serve the plaintiff. All right, hey, first, before we get into this, I just wanna let you know that SoloSuit can do all this for you, all right? Most people, at this point in the video, just go over to solosuit.com and start making their answer document. You can just go onto the website, we ask you a few questions, you give us some answers, and then we generate your answer document for you. We'll even have an attorney review it, and then we will send it out in the mail for you and make sure it gets filed with the court and the opposing attorney properly. Deal or no deal? That's a pretty, pretty good deal. We have over 200 reviews on Google, nearly a five-star rating. One of our customers, George H., he said, when an aggressive debt collection law firm served a summons, even when a request was made for verification of debt, I needed a defense answer quickly. I came across SoloSuit. The service was quick, fast, and on time. Now the firm has to put up or shut up. Thanks, SoloSuit team. Right, that's my kind of review. All right, if you use our service, I'll be leaving us a great review like that. So enough of that, now we're gonna dive into the details of how to do this thing. So you know you're being sued in Washington if you receive something that looks like this. This is the summons document. It tells you that you're being sued. It'll say like the name of the court. It'll say, hey, this is probably how many days you have to respond. It'll say stuff like that. And then this is a complaint document. It'll tell you why you're being sued. All right, so the debt collector is gonna lay out all the details uh, about why you're being sued, right? Like, you know, hey, this guy owes us a debt, he didn't pay it. Step number one is to create your answer document. All right, when you receive a summons and a complaint, you have to respond by creating an answer document and then filing with the court. You're gonna put the necessary details onto it, like the name of the court, the name of the parties, like the defendant, the plaintiff, you, and the debt collector, case number if there is one, and you're gonna get all that stuff laid out on the document properly. Again, this is a, an official court document, so it needs to be formatted properly, okay? Generally speaking, you can't just like, hand write a little note and send it into the court. Right, it has to look legit. Otherwise the court's gonna be like, nah, don't want that. So you gotta make it look good. Before we get to step number two, just a fun fact about myself. I'm actually from Washington. Originally, believe it or not, I went to Kentwood High School, graduating class 2007. Don't do the math. Don't do the math. Washington, love it. Wish I could get back there. Good spot to live, honestly. I missed the rain. Step number two, answer each item in the complaint. All right, so the bulk of your answer is responding to the complaint document. The complaint document has numbered paragraphs. Each paragraph is an allegation against you. And then you have to respond in your answer document to each numbered paragraph. So you have a bunch of numbered paragraphs and they'll have answers. And then you can respond generally in one of three ways. You can either admit, deny, or deny for lack of knowledge. Basically admit a paragraph only if you agree with everything in that paragraph, literally everything, all right? Like the paragraph is perfect. All right, then you deny. Um, generally, like attorneys say, deny if you disagree with something. We like to say as well, so we like to say deny it if you want the other side to prove that it's true. Now denying isn't exactly saying the paragraph isn't true. Denying is really refusing to admit. That's what denying really is. Then you can deny for lack of knowledge. This is oftentimes like, this is a pretty great answer. This is like ultimate indecision. This is like, yeah, I deny it because I don't know if it's true or not. You actually haven't given me enough information to know whether or not this statement is true. So I'm just gonna deny because I don't have enough knowledge. Here's what a solo suit answer document looks like. All right, really good document, time tested. It's obviously one of the most filed documents in courts across the US. I have very good success rates. 80% of the time, our users, our customers get like super good outcomes, meaning the case is either dismissed or they settle it for less. All right, step number three, list your affirmative defenses if applicable. Right, step number three. 
Your affirmative defense is that's just like a fancy word for saying your defenses, right? It's so like why you should win the case. These are things like you don't owe the money, uh, you're not an owner or a co-signer of the account, the contract was actually canceled, you have proof that the debt was already paid, you're a victim of identity theft, like someone stole your identity and then took out a credit card in your name and didn't even know about it until you're being sued for it, right? It happens all the time or the statute of limitations has expired. People love that. People are always searching on Google, like, has my statute of limitations expired? Sometimes it has, oftentimes it hasn't, but sometimes it has. So I'm gonna go over the statute of limitations in Washington right now. Uh, first, what is a statute of limitations? It's literally just that. It's a statute that limits the period of time that somebody can take an action, a legal action against you. In this case, it's a statute that limits how long somebody can come after you for a debt puts a deadline on it. Statute of limitations are covered in the revised code of Washington, Title 4, Section 4.16. Uh, there you go, so you can quote that to your friends. Let them know, Section 4.16. Statute of limitations breaks down by different sections. Oral debt, uh, statute of limitations is three years. Written debt, six years. Mortgages, six years. Open debt, uh, it's like a revolving account, not super common, but three years. Credit card debt, very common six years all right so if you made a payment on a credit card debt seven years ago and someone's trying to sue you for it they legally aren't like able to sue you for it uh, that doesn't mean that they won't sue you for it it doesn't mean that you won't lose if they sue you for it and you don't respond because you will lose it's up to you to bring that up in your answer document all right the judge people think like the judge is a referee the judge doesn't care all right, he's not on your team, he's not on their team, he's not on anybody's team, the judge is impartial. All right, it's up to you to bring this up in the lawsuit, otherwise you will automatically lose your case. You gotta bring that up as a defense in your answer document, okay? And we'll help you do that at solosuit.com. And then, finally, court judgments. 10 years, you might say, hey, what's a court judgment? What kind of debt is that? That's what happens if the plaintiff wins and you lose, they get a judgment against you and then they can come after you for that debt for another 10 years, all right? Big incentive to just respond to the lawsuit. Step number four, this is how you file a document with a court in Washington and send that document to the plaintiff. Once you have the answer document generated and you've responded to the allegations and you've made your affirmative defenses, you gotta print two copies of that document and then you gotta send one copy to the court and one copy to the opposing attorney. Thankfully in Washington, courts don't charge a fee. Court's are actually really pleasant to talk with in Washington. I have personally called many, many, many courts in Washington. They're really friendly over the phone. So I wouldn't hesitate to call them. They're actually helpful that they don't hang up on you like they do in Louisiana, so that's good. You might be saying, hey, you know, I gotta send this thing to the courts. That means I gotta print it, I don't have a printer. Yeah, yep, you gotta have a printer, that's rough. Um, you know, you don't know if your printer has ink, like who knows when the last time was that you used the printer. Might be out of ink or like toner or whatever. And you gotta go down to the post office, you gotta figure out how to send the document in the mail. That can be quite tricky as well. And you also have to find the address for the court and for the plaintiff. For the plaintiff, usually that's pretty easy. That's usually on the summons of the complaint. Um, but it can be tricky to find the address for the court, especially the proper mailing address. Google doesn't always show that to you. Sometimes it shows you the physical address which is different from the mailing address. So again, SolarSuit can take care of that for you. Uh, you just go over to you can create your answer. We will file it with the court for you and make sure it gets to the right place. Uh, I'd love to share another review with you. This review is from Katrina P. She says, I got hit with a lawsuit and started looking up information online. I found SolarSuit and decided to try them out. At first, I was just interested in their free services, but I ended up going with a higher option and made the purchase for their service. Thanks, Katrina. They literally printed and mailed my documents that day. It was very easy to complete the forms and upload the documents. I was initially worried, of course. Didn't know if it was a scam. Nope, not a scam. Or if the courts would accept the documents. The courts accepted the documents and received them within three days. I definitely recommend them. Great and fast service. Definitely legit. What can I say? You know, we're legit. Too legit to quit. Thanks again. No. Thank you, Katrina. Thank you. Thanks for watching the video as we need to know about responding to a debt lawsuit in Washington. That's it. As always, we are rooting for you.